It turns out that the EU might be doing is that they're letting the US innovate, they're letting China copy the innovations, and the EU are trying to regulate what the US and China are doing. And we're failing. So the European Union is at a critical point at this moment. We are today one of the laggards when it comes to new technology such as quantum computing and AI. And these two technologies are leading the way into the future that will create a lot of new prosperity and a lot of new opportunities. But if the European Union does not follow suit, it might have large consequences. Now, so far, the European Union's strategy has been that if we can actually create legislation and regulation to create a framework which AI companies need to follow, then other countries will do the same thing. And that will mean that we are actually at the forefront all of a sudden because if we create a framework that others need to all of a sudden follow, then we will actually have a step ahead of them. As we have already created the frameworks, companies are already following them. Now, this is, for instance, what the European Union did when it came to GDPR. What it turned out that that actually created for the world was a framework which other countries started to create their own legislation about in their own way, but which followed the same type of framework that the European Union created. Now, this was actually net positive in my view for the European Union. Now, for AI, they are implementing the same strategy. And I personally think that this might be a huge mistake because if you read the new AI Act, which has been published, which is about 400 pages, and I skimmed through all of it. Now, I did a sentiment analysis of the AI Act to see how much of the document focuses on future unknown risks which might manifest and how much of it focuses on current risks which are actually risks that we see have manifested today. And what I saw was that this document reads like a sci-fi novel. An absolute majority of the document is focused on future risks, something that we do not even know could manifest itself. Now, this is a huge problem because when legislation is trying to predict the future, they are as wrong as everyone else. Now, the problem with that is that it scares a lot of people. It scares large companies and it scares startups. Now, it turns out that creating regulation about how AI can be used and implemented is actually quite beneficial for large corporations and extremely negative for small organizations. Now, why is that? Well, trying to understand how regulation works and how you follow regulation is quite complicated, complex, and it creates a need for a lot of different legal advisors to actually find out how should we act in this new regulatory environment. Now, for instance, big pharma, banks, all of these large corporations that actually already have legal teams who are experts on regulation, they are quite quick on their feet. So they can actually have enough resources to find out exactly how they should do in this new type of regulatory environment. Small organizations, and by small I mean organizations that might have somewhere in between one and 200 people employed. They usually don't have that many people who work with legal questions. They might have one, maybe two people who work with these types of questions. And those two people might not even be experts on this type of regulation that we are talking about. Now, this creates a large vacuum in between small organizations and larger organizations. So what will be the consequence of the EU regulate the AI preemptively? Well, I think that it will actually be a benefit for larger organizations and it will kill small organizations from using AI and developing their own new type of AI solutions. This is a bad idea 
because when we have this type of environment where new technology is actually creating a lot of new value for us, the majority of that value usually does not come from singular large corporations, but it comes from the smaller actors in the space. It comes from organizations such as OpenAI, which was just five or 10 years ago, quite small. I would say that they were, were a small organization. They didn't have more than 300 people employed. Now that is where the true innovation lies. It usually does not come from the large corporations. The bad thing about this is that when the EU starts regulating this heavily, it benefits the large actors and they can keep doing what they've always been doing. They can consolidate their power and they can keep getting bigger and doing the same thing that they did yesterday. The smaller actors which come in and kind of disrupt the markets, the Microsofts, the Apples, the Amazons, when they were small actors, they are not allowed or able to actually break through in this market because it is way too expensive for them to actually figure out what are they allowed to do, what are they not allowed to do. They don't have enough money to employ these huge legal teams and regulatory experts to actually figure out how to implement AI. Now, this is my prediction for what will happen in the future. And I also, I wouldn't make this prediction because I don't wanna do the same mistake as most experts do and say that they think that they know what will happen in five to 10 years. Why I'm saying this is because I've already seen it happen. I have spoken to large big pharmas, I've spoken to large banks, and they all say the same thing. We know how this regulation works. We know how to implement it. And that is why they are acting so fast. And when I speak to smaller organizations, they are extremely afraid. They're fearful. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn because they don't have enough money and resources to employ regulatory experts. If the EU create legislation and regulation for AI, but there are no AI companies in the European Union, then it turns out that we are just creating a problem for ourselves. Now, there are hundreds of thousands of new startups creating new AI products, and unfortunately, a minority of them are in the European Union. Now, what happens when a union creates legislation for something that they are not even doing. That is a new thing that is happening. We've never seen this happen before in human history. And it might turn out to be a huge mistake. Now, I myself hope that the EU will turn this around. There are plenty of things that the EU could create regulation about. An example of that would be not allowing people to be tricked by AI. Now, what I'm talking about there is the problem that there is a value for us to have conversations with other people. We think that that is a valuable thing, whether it is or not. That is a subjective thing. I like to have conversations with other people. And when there is a value for an organization or people to trick other people to think that they are talking to a human when they are not, I think that, that is a huge problem. We have a fundamental right to know if we are speaking to another person. And that is something that the legislation has missed. And I think that that is an extremely important thing that we should create regulation about. Not create regulation about future risks that we don't even know is going to happen. That is so irrelevant, right? So I hope that the EU will change their mind and change their strategy when it comes to how to regulate AI. There are plenty of risks and things that are happening right now that we could actually create legislation and regulation about. But please stop trying to predict the future you are horrible at it. Oh, yes, you are. This was my video today. I hope that you had a good time. Please remember to su subscribe and like. This is a new channel, so your contribution is really helpful. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.